Hey guys, welcome to a new design education video. Today we're going to look into low-tech design. Low-tech design kind of sits on the opposite of high-tech design. It's kind of a reaction to it. It did exist before high-tech design, that's low-tech is what we used beforehand, and it's coming back now as a reaction from people who are alarmed by the climate crisis. High-tech is defined as the advanced technological development. It usually refers to a product that has electronic parts. Now, high-tech developed at various speeds. It really took its place starting the Industrial Revolution, so in the 18th century. That's when we started developing trains, we started developing various modes of manufacturing. Now, low-tech, on the other hand, refers to technology or innovations that are as simple as possible. They typically don't have electronic parts, and they're much more simple than a complex high-tech design. I personally believe that low-tech needs to be done really intelligently in order to work. Now, you may be asking yourself why, after having developed high technology, we would want to go back to low technology and to systems that make our lives less good. And the idea isn't that. It really isn't. There are various reasons for why we need to integrate low-tech designs a little more in our everyday lives. Firstly, I believe that not everything needs to be high-tech. Like, if you have a fridge, the fridge's purpose is to cool down your food. You don't really need the fridge to tell you the weather. <laughs> you have 10 other devices that do that for you. There are these things that just, they don't make sense. There's no reason for this. And it doesn't necessarily make your life mu that much better. And that's the reason why I talk about necessity. Because the downsides of using so much high tech is that we have huge social issues, environmental issues. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. When you're making a high-tech product, and this is the second reason, when you're making a high-tech product, you're using a bunch of materials. One of these materials is metals. We know when you're making an iPhone, you have a bunch of precious metals that need to be mined. The mining conditions are horrendous. The wages are terrible. Maybe social issues are not your thing. Okay, let's put those aside. Environmentally speaking, this is a disaster because metals are a finite resource. They're not renewable. We don't have infinite amounts of it. They're going to run out. We actually have projections for when copper won't be available, iron won't be available, and we are going full force into those directions. And it means that in a few decades, we don't have those metals anymore, and we do not live with technology anymore. This is the point. The point is high-tech can only work for so long. It's like capitalism. Capitalism is falling now because it's not a system that works for humans. It's not a system that works in this kind of earth. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work with climates. It it doesn't work with our environment. It clashes with social issues. The third reason as to why we should limit designing and buying high-tech products I think this happens for every single recording. <laughs> um, the third point I want to make is that a lot of high-tech products are made to be broken by the companies. This is what planned obsolescence is. So they make a washing machine. All of the parts can last up to 30 years, except for one that breaks after three to four years. Uh, or usually just a little over your warranty period, <laughs> coincidentally. Um, <laughs> uh, and so what's going to happen is you're going to use it for three to four years, or maybe a little more, and then it's going to break down. Once it breaks down, most people, instead of repairing it, will throw it away and buy a new one. And this is just the way that system the system is made. And it's not necessarily the consumer's fault. It's just a better deal, and I understand that. Most people don't have enough money to just fix everything, get everything fixed, because it costs just as much as a new one. The problem with that, though, is that you're throwing away all of those precious metals we talked about, all of these parts that are still perfectly working, the motor probably works very well, and we just throw them out. And it's, it's a shame, because we're throwing out so many resources that we don't have, right? It's like someone spending money that they don't have. 
and we're going to pay the cost of climate change. We're going to pay the cost of our actions. So why not wake up now and try to get things to change? The fourth point, my fourth point, is that low-tech designs could be as efficient, if not more efficient, than high-tech designs. I'm going to give you an example. There's a village in the Philippines that uses this water pump that's connected to the river that flows near it. And basically, the pump doesn't use any fuel, no electricity, no fossil fuels, nothing. It uses the power of the water current. And it's a simple engineering design. And with that, they're able to find solutions to this specific issue. This is also something that's very important. Analyzing for specific problems, specific scenarios. We still do this a lot. We still find a technology, find something that works somewhere, and just slap it on everywhere where it has a similar issue. When you're pumping water in the Philippines, you're not going to pump water in Canada the same way. Uh, somewhere that has a river, maybe, you could use the same pump, but using the same, and this is the problem with capitalism, you capitalize on one solution, but it doesn't work everywhere, it works for one specific place, and then it's mediocre for the rest. Let's say that you're trying to cool down an area. Okay. If you want to cool down a house in the desert, you're not going to use the same solution as if you want to cool down foods. Well, on one side you have humans who, who usually like to be in between 18 to 21 degrees Celsius. And on the other hand you have foods that usually need much lower temperatures to stay fresh, so like 4 or 5. These two different scenarios can't have the same solution applied to both. Because they are completely different scenarios with completely different needs. Now, let's look at high-tech cooling systems versus low-tech cooling systems. Most high-tech cooling systems are air conditioners or fans. The good side of air conditioning is that it cools you down quickly and efficiently. It can also prevent deaths due to heat, which is really great. But that's not specific to high-tech air conditioning. You can achieve the same thing with a low-tech air conditioner. High-tech air conditioning uses fossil fuels or uses electricity that's generated by burning fossil fossil fuels. The problem with that is that it's going to release more heat, more CO2 into the atmosphere. Air conditioners can also lead to health issues if you don't maintain them properly. Now let's look at low-tech innovations for cooling. I picked three that treat three different scenarios. Uh, so the first one, the first one is something that I saw on Instagram. This cooling wall uh, and it basically uses the airflow to cool down the air. So the hot air comes in from the outside, it goes through the wall and it comes out cool on the other side and it can cool a whole room. So it's basically cons it basically consists of these, these cylindrical pottery pieces. I think it uses uh, a little bit of water as well and it basically using thermodynamics and using ancient technology cools down the, the air. Moving on to the second low-tech. This is a building in Zimbabwe called the Eastgate Building and it uses nature-inspired design uh, for cooling. So it uses the structure of an anthill to cool down. So an anthill has a main chimney and then it has bu a bunch of canals that come out of it and it basically cools down the air in the mound. The building is built in the same way. It has a main chimney and then it has a bunch of canals that cool down the houses inside the building. The last innovation I wanted to talk about is a way of cooling foods, keeping foods fresh. It's basically this refrigerator that was developed in India that uses no fuels, no electricity, nothing. It uses thermodynamics and water to cool down the products. They do need a lot of engineering and knowledge in order to be functional and simple but they help us cut back on fossil use, on CO2 emissions, while still keeping a level of comfort. You know, we don't need to give up, we don't need to go back to, can to the candle age um, <laughs> in order to have less of an impact. The goal is to design and consume better, is to do things with a little more intelligence and a little more thought. Think about the impact that you have. As a consumer, you have so much power. Consumers can decide whether a company succeeds or fails. If tomorrow people decide to buy less Apple products, Apple will be forced to review their system. If we decide to not buy Apple products anymore, they will be obliged to do something. They'll either fail completely or they'll have to redirect to, you know, fit the consumer's needs. That's why all these companies are collecting data, because they have to please the customers. So if the customers aren't pleased, then they have to change. 
We have the power to decide what the future looks like. It is going to take a lot of work to finish up. Lotech is definitely a very useful tool that designers and consumers should look into. I do believe that we need to push low-tech designs a little bit further, that we need to design them better so that consumers can be convinced of switching and holding back on high-tech designs. Alright, that's all I wanted to talk about. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you disagree completely with me. Maybe you think that high-tech is the way for progress. Maybe you think that without progress, humans are nothing. Let me know in the comments below. Tell me what you think. Maybe I can make a video about profit or progress in the scope of design and we can talk about it some more. Uh, if you enjoy this video, if you learn something new, like it, share it with your friends if you think they'll enjoy it, and I will see you later.